and I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight every one against his brother, and every one against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. Isaiah chapter 19, verse 2. Shalom. I want to start by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachakudash, and double honor to our venerable apostles and elders of Great Millstone who were well, and peace and blessings to the Lord's elect, the house of David. It's the brother Aharon coming back at you with another lesson, and Lord willing to be edifying and informative unto the elect. All right, and um, I believe today is the 29th. Let's just double check that. Yep. 29th of uh of october 2024 the hopeful year of jacob's trouble and we're about uh, about say a week away from um so-called election day which is i believe november the 5th if i'm not mistaken tuesday next week all right so exactly one week from today all right and um we have about two more days left or three more days left in this uh month okay and uh you know Watching what's going on, all right, and uh, as the prophecy states that we're coming into a time of violence, all right, which all that violence is all going is going to build up into uh, what is known as Jacob's trouble, because really all these things that's happening is really because of the children of Israel, all right. Whatever you see here in America going on here in America is because of the children of Israel. It's always going to circle back to the children of Israel, okay, whether it's the two thirds who have offended the Heavenly Father greatly. All right, so therefore he's bringing the judgment and he's not going to save them from that judgment except for the elect or the judgment coming for these heathens who have partaken in the destruction of our people. Okay, so either way you look at it, all right, there's going to be violence upon the face of American soil. Now, I believe last week, if I'm not mistaken, there was a, uh, there was a directive, all right, that the military or what they use, the National Guard, but the military can use force deadly force against american citizens on american soil basically doing away with the posi comitatus all right now when we go back to isaiah 19 and 2 it says the lord says this he says i will set the egyptians against the egyptians all right the modern day egyptians okay just like the modern day babylonians is talking about americans okay and we're going to go into this article here all right just to highlight what this is all about okay but this prophecy is coming to fruition and is coming quickly. Okay, so it says, I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, the Republicans versus the Democrats, because America, as you can see, is a two two party state. Okay, just like going back to ancient Rome. All right, the Roman Empire had a two party state. You had the, the plebeians and then you had the patricians. Okay, so same thing here. You have the Republicans and you have the Democrats. Okay. So it says, and they shall fight everyone against his brother and everyone against his neighbor. Because every every way you go, you're going to have that division there. You're going to have, every, you, know, you drive through the streets, you see it. right? One house may have uh, Harris Wal Wal Walsh or Waltz or whatever whatever that demon's name is. All right? And then you have the next house you go to, it says uh, Trump Vance. Right? So it's like literally house, house to house, neighbor to neighbor, you got that division going on there. Right, they, they they openly promote what they support, right? Whatever political party that they're affiliated with, or whatever the case may be, right? Which which uh, politics we call it politics is nothing but the, uh, theater. Okay, that's all they do. It's all we're gonna put somebody in front of you that we've already pre-selected. Okay, and then you know based on your vote, which is basically you giving them permission to go ahead and do whatever it is that they're gonna be doing over the next four years or sometimes eight years, okay, you're giving your consent to that when you vote, okay? You're not really choosing who's going to be president so they could come in and do the things that they promised that they were going to do or they campaigned that they're going to do whenever they come into power. No, you're just voting in or basically giving your consent onto whatever that they're going to be doing over the next uh, four years, right? So that's what voting is really about, all right? It says... Um, and they shall fight everyone against his, his brother and everyone against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. And if and when, not, not if, forget about if, when this happens, th it's going to result in martial law. Okay? It's going to result in martial law. Right? Now, being that this is a prophecy, 
right? When you go to the top of it, it says the burden of Egypt. Okay, America is spiritual Sodom and Egypt, as is written in the book of Revelation, I believe the eighth chapter. Let's see if I can get that. Oh, uh, is it no 11? 11th chapter. Let's see if we can get that real quick. Mm. All right. Um, the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 11, and verse 8, it says, um, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street. Of the great city and who's that who's those dead bodies the dead bodies is representing you, you you israelites okay they call you negroes for a reason right when you go into that word negro it goes back to a greek necro which means dead right now you're not physically dead laying around in the streets but you're spiritually dead pertain to uh jeremiah the 17th chapter the lord said he's going to cut us off of, from our heritage okay so we there's a point where we had no idea who the hell we are but now we're waking up to who we are as israelites the children of the most high and that comes with, you know, the ups and downs, of course, right? Because these other nations see that and they get they get alerted, they get alarmed, right? And now they can't physically, well, eventually they will, Esau will. But right now they, their job is to try to deter us from coming back to our reality of who we are, okay? But here it says, And their dead body shall lie in the street of the great city, that great city is America, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Why? Because America, just like ancient Egypt, um, has a lot of similarities. They have these um, pagan practices, right? And then the most um, open uh, similarity is the fact that ancient Egypt had the children of Israel as slaves. Same thing happened here in spiritual Egypt, America today. All right, going back to, I believe, the the, the, the year 1619 was when you had um, um, the Israelites being brought over here, starting with the, with, the, with the Americas, all right, Latin America, and then eventually all the way up here, up north. Okay, but 1619 all the way to now. All right, we've been we've been in this captivity here. Okay, so it says, um, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Now you don't have to. Nobody has to tell you. All right, that America is the the land of Sodom. Okay, all the shit that they do, the kind of laws that they have to protect that type of act. Right, it, it's just outright uh, um, defiant against the heavenly Father's laws. But yet, every president who comes in swears in the so-called Bible. Okay, whatever that, whatever, I mean, whatever. Anyway, it says, where also our Lord was crucified. Okay, spiritually crucified, as in, look what they do in to these, uh, these churches. They're not teaching the word, the, the true biblical um, Yahweh Shai. They're not teaching that. Okay, everything that they do, these pastors is all phony uh, actors, man. Okay, all, all they do is push madness. All right, they do everything contrary to the will of the Heavenly Father. Okay, when you go into even, even a step further, Right. Um, they persecute us who come and teach about Yahweh Shai. OK, they're trying to persecute us using guys like vocab and so on and so forth. OK, but here they crossed out the Heavenly Father and his son. OK, they took out prayers from the church, uh, from the from the schools. Right. So children are not being taught about the Heavenly Father, which should be the first thing. Every school should really be teaching the Bible. That's the first thing. Right. But here we're in a country where. That's that's a that's a that's a mm -mm, you can't do that. You can't do that. You got to separate church and state. Oh, you know, <laughs> this place is finished. All right. And we're seeing the signs of this place being completely done. All right. And that civil war is coming. That's what that that verse we just read in uh, in Isaiah 19 is talking about. It's, talk, it's talking about that great civil war. OK, which is, I call it the uncivil civil war. All right. But let's read. It says Americans bracing for violence after Election Day. In an era where political rhetoric has intensified, both sides of the aisle are expressing heightened fears about the stability of American democracy. A Scripps News slash Ipsos poll reveals that over 60% of Americans believe violence on or after Election Day, November 5th, is somewhat or very likely. All right. And earlier this year, I believe in April, all right, the movie Civil War came out. OK, and when you really look at it, it was the plot was pretty much like. Um, they were going after the uh, the so-called president, okay, which is going into Second Ezra, the fifteenth chapter. All right, because of the the policies, because of the the reality of these um, measures being taken, all right, upon the American people, they eventually they realized that yo, these people in power are not even for us. We have to do something about this, because they keep coming in and saying we're going to do this for you, we're going to do this for you. Look at this clown, Kamala Harrison, the lion whore that she is. 
Okay. This bitch went into a, a, a church, a so-called black church, and she changed up her whole accent. All right. And I posted a little clip of that where she put out straight up letting them know that the time of trouble is coming. All right. She said there's going to be joy in that. All right. When you really listen to the, the words of the words that they because she's reading off her teleprompter. All right. And these things are being pr pr uh, programmed all right, to be set a certain way. OK, she said uh, there's joy in the morning. There's going to be joy in the morning. And she said in church, who's the church? The Israelites. OK, and church, the morning is coming or something like that. All right. The, the morning is on its way. Some shit like that. You know what I mean? So they're letting you know that the time of trouble for you jigs is coming. That's why they're trying so hard. You got um, this this guy, uh, Michael Obama. All right. Perpetrating as a woman. Again, another abominable act. So another another reason why America is going to be destroyed. All right. He comes up. All right. Masquerading like a woman. He comes up and says, oh, you know, if you if you vote against uh, Kamala Harrison, that you vote against women's rights. Hey, shut the fuck up, man. Nobody want to hear that shit. All right. All that stupid bullshit. All these people out of nowhere, they come out of the woodwork and they're pushing the same thing. They want you Jakes to get involved. Why are they not pushing this on the so-called Chinese people? Why are they not going to all these other people? They, they're pushing Jake. You, you men, you men, you men. You need to, you know, join in. You got to, we need your vote. We need your vote. Get the fuck out of here, bro. You know, people are waking up. Jake is waking up and putting the pieces together. And they're trying to lure you right back into the shit. You know why they're doing that? They're not really worried about the women so much. Why? Because the Israelite man is waking up. Right? A lot of these Jakes are not voting either Democrat or not voting at all. Right? They'd rather go Republican or not vote at all because they seen the things that's going on is not is not benefiting them. Right. And then you couple that with the truth. They seen it like, nah, this ain't going nowhere. All right. We've seen this time and time again before, man. We not we not with this shit no more. And they're trying to subconsciously bring you back down again. And Jake is saying, nah, -uh. OK, did not the scripture say that uh, the Lord is going uh, 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 Judah. All right. It's going to be a terror onto Egypt. OK. And they're terrified at the fact that Judah is waking up. All right. The fact that they're not voting the normal way how they used to. That's a sign of them waking up. There's something else. There's something off. That's how they're looking at it. We need to go back and see. Send Obama out there. Oh, that send his, his husband out there. Uh, Michael Obama. Let him go say something too. You know. Soon they're going to be using these uh, so-called prominent leaders in your, in your communities. The, whether it be the pastors, the doctors, whoever. The celebrities. Everybody's going to endorse Kamala Harrison. Right. To see if Jake is going to follow through with it. They're not. Right. And that's all part of the reason why this thing is going to pop off crazy very soon. OK, because Jake is not biting the bullet like they used to. I right? did not. They're not going for that cheese. <laughs> all right. That bait is not working. OK, it says with 70 percent of Democrats and 59 percent of Republicans expecting unrest and particularly high concerns among battleground state voters like Wisconsin. 72%. The specter of post-election violence looms large. All right. Conservative Americans in particular see these threats not as isolated incidents, but as part of a broader erosion of public trust caused by political overreach, biased media narratives, and what they perceive as insecure election practices. You see that? Political overreach. Right? It's caused an erosion of public trust. Okay. What did Klaus Schwab and them say? That their next project was going to be about public trust. We need to gain the trust of the people. In other words, we need to get that illusion back on because it's, it's failing. The magic is, is going, right? The, the, the deception is wearing off. People are waking up. That's what they mean. You need to trust because the only way you trust a deceptive devil like these people is if you're lulled to sleep or you're under some type of daze. All right? You're some type of... um. You 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 drink you drank some type of potion, all right? That witchcraft potion. Okay, <clears throat> it says these concerns have been exacerbated by unprecedented legal and political attacks on former President Donald Trump, with attempts to prosecute him and even disqualify him from the ballot in some states. And uh, there was some news coming out was a couple of days ago that there's been uh, arson on a lot of the the, the ballot boxes. All right, they're being destroyed and all kinds of different stuff. So that's also going to put, and I, it makes you wonder who, who who's actually doing that? Who the hell is actually going around burning things down like that? All right? Well, we all know problem, reaction, solution. We all know about agent provocateurs. Okay? We all understand how, um, going back to the letter 
by Albert Pike to his, his man, Giuseppe Mazzini, that they're going to send their agenters, their agents out there to start shit. Okay, so what you see in the Middle East, then Yahoo, he's all part of them, them agents, man. Both sides. Okay, both sides of the wars are always funded by the same entity to bring about a common, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, goal, if you will. All right, or to reach a common goal. All right, so continuing says, um, many, many Republicans view these efforts as a form of political warfare aimed in disenfranchising millions of Trump supporters by preventing them from casting their votes for the candidate of their choice. And the mainstream media is doing a great job with the lies. All right, because, you know, you, you, you actually watch certain things. You see Trump wherever he goes, there's a lot of more people following and supporting him, right? And when you look at... It's lucky. When you look at um, Kamala Harrison, okay, um, she got she, she's really not getting that much support as they wish she would get. And why the hell would anyone support her? You know? Then now they're saying that the, the, the women are, are not in support of her like they were with Biden. Can you believe that? Barely there, Biden got more supporters than Kamal Harrison. But yet she's still going around. Man, this shit is crazy. And that's why if she wins, if she wins, it'll be great. Because then this shit's going to go down even faster. <laughs> but if she wins, then you know it's going to be a fishy, fishy reason. All right? That's if we even get an election. Whatever, man. This thing is, 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 is shaping up to be something very interesting. Many, many different things could happen. All right, they could finally pull the trigger and assassinate this dude Trump. You know, of course, it's all staged, but they could do that. You know, they could literally take him out. You know, after the Joe Rogan, um, you know, uh, podcasting that they did, he, he said a lot of stuff, you know. But, hey, it's all staged anyway. So they might, they just, hey, listen, let's just take this guy out for the for the public reaction. I gave that example before how they, he's managed to garner all this support. So it would be nice if they took him out to piss off the people. See, kind of like they do in WWE, where the good guy, you know, seems like he's about to do something good. And then the crowd starts cheering and the bad guy comes in and takes him out and everybody starts booing the bad guy. That's exactly what they're trying to do or they might do, you know, take this guy out and just take the sail out of the people's boat, you know, take the wind out of their sail, I should say, you know, because they're looking at Trump as, as hope. Like you could, you could help us. You could save us from the, 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 the bullshit we've been going through for the past four years. You know, Trump, when we were, when Trump was in power, things were better, da, da, da. And then you take his ass out, mm -hmm. piss the people off even more. That'd be nice, right? But we'll see, we'll see. So continuing, it says, um, according to the poll, significant number, a significant number of Republicans, over 40% indicated that if their candidate lost, they will attribute the loss to widespread election fraud. Okay, this concern highlights a persistent worry among conservatives about the security and fairness of elections, a concern that has led to calls for reform in several Republican led states. And that reform is going to be done through AI. It's not just no, oh, we're going to have to no. it's a digital reform. Anything that comes out from now on is all going to be, well, we need to have AI or digi digital uh, um, fixing it, you know, some form of digital, uh, um, you know, uh, solution to any problems that's going on right now. That's that's going to lead you to understand that this is all manufactured. OK, it's all manufactured. Um, it says for many conservative Americans, traditional in-person voting remains the most reliable method. Only about one third of Americans and less than half of independents express confidence in the, in the security of ballot drop boxes, while trust in mail in voting is only slightly higher. Thirty eight percent among Republicans and 51 percent among independents. These low levels of confidence in alternative voting methods are not seen as unwarranted skepticism by Republicans. Rather, they are considered logical reactions to irregularities observed in past elections, such as delayed counts and reports of lost or mishandled ballots. So those things were done back then for what you're seeing now today. OK, it says to address these concerns, conservative led states have passed legislation to tighten voting regulations. See? They have to always, we got to fix it. We always got to fix it. And the problem that we cause, we're going to fix it. And you, the people, are going to take a hit for it, for us fixing it. <laughs> it says, um, it says, reducing reliance on, uh, hold on a second. Did I just read that? Oh, yeah, yeah. It says, to address these concerns, conservative-led states have passed legislation to tighten voting regulations, including requiring voter ID. See? The digital ID. ID, ID, ID. Always remember that. 
soon it's going to turn to the radio frequency ID. All right. Reducing reliance on mail-in ballots and implementing stricter oversight of ballot drop boxes. And people can't really be stricter. When you see people and their, how their brain works now, they can't even focus. How are they going to be stricter? Okay. So soon it's going to be, okay, that oversight, we're going to have to use digital oversight. AI is going to have to step in to be that oversight. Okay. While these efforts are often characterized by Democrats as voter suppression, conservatives argue that they are necessary to protect the integrity of the electoral process. And that's not true. There ain't no integrity in that shit. Okay. It says public trust in mainstream media is another issue shaping conservative views on election integrity and post-election violence because they're, they're, they're what they call, um, they're priming the people all right, for um, post-election violence. They've been doing that since uh, Trump got out of presidency last 2020, what, 2020, 2021, all right? They've been pushing that, oh, the elections was rigged, oh, Trump stole the election, oh, you know, whatever. Russian collusion, remember that? <laughs> it says, uh, many Republicans feel that mainstream media disproportionately amplifies accusations against conservative figures while downplaying or ignoring similar accusations against Democrats. I mean, years ago, that, that statement would be known as a conspiracy theory, theory. Oh, you don't believe the mainstream media? Now people are looking at it like, yo, you, you, all you people do is lie. We don't want to watch you. You know? It says, for example, Trump's response to the 2020 election results and the January 6 events received continuous media scrutiny, while statements from current administration officials labeling Trump and his supporters as threats to democracy have faced minimal critique. This person, and, and that, that should tell you something, that if Kamala Harrison comes in, they're coming after everyone who's a so-called Trump supporter, everyone who's uh, anti-Vanessa, right, anti-government, anti-this, anti-that. Basically, if you stand for the truth, because all they're doing is pushing lies through propaganda. So if you defy or you go against that, the, the given narrative, they're going to anti-something on you. They're going to put anti sam They're going to do an anti-something, whatever it is. You're anti Satan, you're anti the you're anti the whatever. They're gonna put the anti label on you and then they're gonna be justified in coming after you. Okay. It says this perceived double standard has led many conservatives to seek information from alternative news sources. Let's let, let, these are the news sources that are the alternative to them, including Fox News and Newsmax. <laughs> Fox News, uh, which are seen as more reflective of conservative perspectives and values, right? Because they play both sides. All right, the people who own CNN and the people who own Fox all work together. It's just in case you didn't know that, okay? Mainstream media, it's called mainstream for a reason. Whoever controls it. There used to be like over a hundred something um, media uh, outlets, conglomerates, or whatever, that were independent to a degree. And then now it's about six, which are all controlled by, uh, what's this guy? Fox News is controlled by or owned by, I think, Rupert Murdoch, all right? And um, I forget the other one, but they all work together, okay? They're all, you know, it's all it's all a scheme. They're all working together, all right, against the people, okay? But there's a reason why that is, all right? Because it's setting up the stage for the prophecy in 2nd Ezra, the 15th chapter. Let's get that. There's a book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 15, and verse, five, uh, verse 15, it says, For the sword and the destruction, actually, let's start off at 14. It says, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. That's exactly what's written in Isaiah 19. All right, let's bring it back to Isaiah 19. It says, Isaiah 19 and 2, it says, And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight everyone against his brother, and everyone against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. Right? That part right there, Yahweh also mentioned. Right? There shall be wars and rumors of wars, right? There's going to be, uh, um, let's, let's see if I can pull that up real quick. Is that Matthew 24? Right? And let's see. Matthew 24 and verse, uh, let's do six. It says, And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, right? That's the key. There's a division. There's a war, right? So much so that Yahushai mentions it just like Isaiah and just like Ezra, right? Three different uh, testimonies or, or um, 
yeah, testimonies of the same exact event, all right? A civil war that ends up into, uh, you know, kind of builds into uh, the world war that ends up into the, the uh, intergalactic war, <laughs> all right? So it's just a time of war uh, pertaining to uh, Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, okay? And not, that, that means that it's not a time of peace, okay? So whoever is teaching that we're in a time of peace, as it says in the book of Jeremiah, they teach the time of peace when there is no peace, okay? It says, um, and, they sh and, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Okay, so Ezra is highlighting the same thing, right? The wool is pretty much summed up by Yahushai with the, the famines, the pestilences, the sword, and so on and so forth, right? It says, for the sword, going back to 2 Ezra 15 and 15, for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands, meaning weapons, right? And there shall, there shall be sedition among men, and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. Okay, that's that civil unrest. All right, they're going to be going around. So the name, it ain't going to be no protest. It's going to be just straight up riots. Okay, that's what democracy really is, right? Mob rule. That's what democracy is, mob rule. Okay, so they're going to be using that, and then it's going to end up with martial law. That's where you see the 17th verse coming. It says, a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. Why? Because of martial law. Okay? They'll shut everything down. They'll block off the streets. All that. All right? And people are going to be, ah, you're going to have to stay in your house. If not, you're going to get shot on sight. Period. Okay? It says, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. Hmm? The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Okay? So that's what's coming, man. That's what you, you're going to see this in America very, very soon. All right? And like I said before, that directive that was given all right, by the DOD, the DOD directive, that's going to play a major, major role very soon. All right? They're sending it all up for the time of martial law. Okay? For the time of martial law, man. All right? So let's end it off with this. We're going to close it out. All right, it's the book of Revelation, chapter 12, and verse 12, it says, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. All right, that's why the whole election thing, people are um, on edge, because it's, it's a time of woe. All right, troubles, a time of war. Okay? Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. All right? So anyway, I'm going to leave it off there. Lord willing, you are edified and informed. In closing, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachel Kodash, the water Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And until next time, Shalom.